Hello guys, Barry from Copper vs Glass and today we're going to be taking a look at something which I didn't really think I would ever do uh, and that's taking a look at Android L on my Nexus 5. Uh, now this isn't going to be a video of telling you how you can put Android L on your Nexus 5, it's really just a preview and this is my thoughts on Android L as it is at the moment. Now obviously I must point out that this is nowhere near final software, it's very much a dev beta at the moment for people to test and start developing on, um, but it does work, it is functional, and I've had very little issues with it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Android L looks like in its current form on my Nexus 5. So the biggest thing about Android L and the most biggest difference between the current version which is KitKat and the next version Android L is in fact the user interface. Now they developed something called Material Design which is essentially emphasizing their card UI that they've had for a few, a few uh, iterations of Android now, um, basically meaning that you can have surfaces that look like they're on top of other surfaces such as cards on top of each other that produce shadows and slide around on top of each other like real sheets of paper. Um, now that may sound a little bit odd, but um, I'll link to a description in the video about Google's explanation of material design uh, and it really does give you an idea of where they're going with the design and how they're trying to unify all their platforms together, phone, TV, tablet, car interface, smartwatches, everything together um, to this new material design language and it actually looks really, really nice. Now when you first look at Android L, the biggest difference you'll notice is of course with the buttons down the bottom, the navigation buttons. Um, now if you've played PlayStation, you may recognize them as the PlayStation buttons with uh, of course the X missing. Um, but I think they're actually quite nice and simple. You have a triangle to, which is your back button, the circle which is your home, and the square which is your multitasking button. I actually think they look really nice and simple and I don't mind this design change at all. The next thing you'll notice is that Material Design hasn't quite made its way onto this preview build of Android L in as much as I would perhaps like to see. Um, really the only thing that's changed are very few things, um, specifically interface, not so much app design. If we actually look at applications that have changed design to the new Android L, the first one we're going to be looking at is of course the calculator. It's a very simple application but it gives you a really good idea as to what Android L and the other apps are going to look like eventually when they're converted over. You'll notice we've got some really bright popping colours, uh, a little bit pastel-y and some are quite neon uh, bright. Um, the, cal the calculator for example has a blue streak across the top with the green uh, panel down the bottom. Now you notice in the interface you have a slight shadow element to all of these giving you kind of hints as to what these things do. So the calculator has a slide out panel on the side uh, and you can see the white box at the top forms a shadow on the green here emphasizing that it's on top and even the green panel has a shadow over the layer above that. So you really start to see sort of a depth in the UI based on this material design. Um, if we start typing in some numbers, the other thing you'll see is that everything is quite animated with uh, a lot of ripple effects, not so much Samsung ripple effects like actual water ripple effects, but just kind of popping colours and shapes underneath things that you do. Some people love or hate this. Myself, I'm not too bothered about it. I can potentially see it being a little bit annoying though if everything does animate like this. So I'm intrigued to see how they take this going forward. For example, if we press delete, it's going to start deleting numbers, but if I hold down, a really nice transition effect um, to, to see that that's been wiped clean. The next application and pretty much the only other one they've adjusted to look like new material design is the dialer application. Uh, now myself personally I actually find this to be a little bit busy and a little bit messy in terms of the UI. There's quite a lot of information on the screen here. If we actually look we've got our normal search at the top which is in the new dialer you can search through contacts and places. You've got recents at the top and then you've got your favourite starred next below it. And then you've got the hovering button in the middle for the actual dial pad. This hovering circle button is going to be quite predominant through a lot of Android apps coming forward, specifically the plus button in Gmail um, and you've got the pencil app in the Google Plus application. So this hovering button at the bottom is going to be quite uh, prevalent for a lot of Android apps. Of course we can swipe across and see recent and then our entire list of contacts. If I press on the dialer app, you can see it slides up from the bottom and we can start dialing. And again, we've got a shadow effect at the top here to, to tell us that the dial pad is above the layer on top, uh, visually, visually in the UI, which is quite nice. Um, if we swipe down, you notice that the UI will go back to how we were before. So the thing with material design is they really want to give you an idea of 
how things really would interact sliding across. They don't want anything to just pop out of existence. They have it sort of sliding in from the bottom or the side because things that just pop into existence aren't really real. So they've kind of tried to make it more real by actually having things slide around and change rather than just coming in from thin air. In terms of design changes, those two apps are really the only two they've changed at the moment to look like new material design. So we're not yet going to get a good idea of what the rest of the apps are going to look like, although there have been some leaked screenshots online. The next thing you'll notice about the change is going to be the notification pull down. So if I pull it down here, you're going to start to see your notifications. The notifications are these white cards that come up uh, in order of what they uh, were delivered to your phone. But if we actually want to get to the quick settings menu, whereas before we had a button in the top corner and it would flip the panel around to our quick settings, uh, we now just pull down again from the top and we then have our quick settings. Uh, I actually think this is a really good UI addition because uh, it keeps it all in one consistent pull down and you don't have to worry about extra buttons to press. The really good thing is two things I like about this quick settings panel. The brightness slider is right at the top, they're really quick and easily accessible. And then we also have an auto rotate button. Um, I rooted my phone and put Sanji mod on my phone purely just to get that feature because the auto rotate is something I do quite a lot and to go into the settings every time was really painless, um, really difficult to do. Um, they also have, if you notice, a car screen icon. This is for the up and coming car screen function uh, that's going to be coming to Chromecast so you can mirror your entire device. If you click it and send it to your Chromecast, which I have, it doesn't do anything yet, it errors out, uh, but in future that's what that's going to be used for. You notice at the top there we have the time and the date which actually move location um, when you pull down the notifications. And then we have a battery, the settings and a profile picture. The profile picture just simply shows you what Google account you've got signed in at the time. If we click on the settings of course, we're going to be taken to the new settings page. My personal opinion on this is that I don't really like it too much. The white is a bit too much for me. It's a bit like iOS, a lot of their interface is white uh, and a bit like it actually looks like the G3 interface, the LG G3 with a lot of white uh, in the settings. I don't like it. I hope they go back to black settings menu uh, with white text or color text, uh, but this is what they have at the moment. You can see as we scroll up and down, it's a very similar layout to the settings and options that we had before. Um, if we go into the Wi-Fi, for example, you can see the sort of style they're going for here. There's a dark at the top, white down the bottom, and some coloured hints on the sliders. For example, here it's like a sort of a pastel green blue colour, which is quite nice. If we go back to the home screen, the next thing you'll see is the lock screen, which is a big difference. So if I unlock my phone, you can see right here now on the lock screen are my notifications. Now there are security. Uh, protocols in place where you can hide notifications if you don't want people to see them on the lock screen without unlocking, unlocking it, but because I have mine just fully unlocked, I'm going to see my notifications straight here. Now to actually get to them, all I do is I just tap once, and you can see it kind of pops out a little bit, but if I tap twice, then it's actually going to take me to that notification. So you can see it, tap twice, and it takes you to that notification. So that's a really good way of using it, I think. If we go back onto the lock screen, you can see that down the bottom we've got three icons, a phone, a padlock and a camera. This is indicating to us that there are three actions now we can do on the lock screen. So if I swipe in from the left hand side, it's going to take me straight to the dialer, which is quite a nice shortcut. If I want to just unlock the phone in its most basic way, I can just swipe up anywhere on the screen. And to get to the camera, I can swipe in from the right. Um, just a quick point on the camera, in this build of Android L, the camera does behave a bit funny, it's really slow to process images, especially HDR, um, and it also doesn't crop the images very well. You'll notice if you take a photo with something in the centre of the frame, and the actual final result has it off to the side, so the cropping's not accurate on the sensor, so that's probably just, again, part of this preview build. If we actually go back in, one of the other things they've changed in the UI is the multitasking. If we bring this up, you notice that multitasking is now in this kind of card form similar to how iOS Safari does it and in fact Chrome as well where it overlays cards on top of each other just showing the top of each one as you scroll through. Uh, some people have already said online they don't like this feature but I think it's actually quite a good UI element uh, and you can just of course swipe away the ones you don't want to see back to the home screen so I actually think that's quite a nice UI element. One of the other things I really like about Android L is its new power saving mode, which is now in stock Android. Uh, most customized phones like 
the Samsung phones which have the touch uh, touch with UI um, and the LG skins for example they have power saving modes built in on top uh, of Android to get to these power saving modes all we do is we pop into the settings on the phone which we can do by a double pull down and click on the settings options we can then scroll down to our battery option in the settings just like we have done before and we can now see a really great visual representation of how much our battery has actually got left estimated by the phone and you can see that apparently this is going to last me until 9 o'clock the next day which is really really good but if I wanted to turn on the power saving mode manually I go click on the options in the top and click battery saver now you can see that it's always on is off which means that it's not always on and I haven't forced it to turn on but I have set it to come on at 15% battery now what this does, um, and it's not entirely clear as to what it does yet, but uh, it seems to, when you turn this on or it comes on at 15% when you set it, um, it throttles back the brightness of the screen, it also dulls down the um, processor speed, so it goes really, really slowly. And I've actually tested it and if you take a HDR photo, for example, on this power saving mode, it's gonna take forever to render and complete that image uh, because the processor is running so slowly. Um, but they, they say in this that you'll be able to uh, get quite considerably more battery life in this and I did a test on my Nexus 5 where I ran it in battery saving mode the whole time um, from start to finish and I got nearly two days out of it with normal use um, whereas on non-battery saver I would get a day uh, if that so the battery saving mode is really good and they've already tested it um, on phones like the Nexus 5 and they're in seeing about 30 to 20 percent battery increase with normal use so that's really really handy. So overall, uh, those are a few features from Android L. Um, as I've said, they haven't really started to change the apps to the new version yet. A lot of these are the same as you'll see in KitKat, apart from the phone and the dialer. Um, but of course, you've got the big interface changes like notifications, the pull down, and the multitasking, and just over, overall some tweaks to the UI to integrate that new material design language. So overall, Android L is a really good addition to Android, and I can't wait to see the finished product sometime later on this year in a couple of months' time. Uh, and I think that to bring it to the rest of the products, tablets, especially the watches, the Android Wear watches, and to integrate it onto the desktop platform as well, such as the new Gmail redesign, I think it's going to bring Android all together, and it's going to look really nice. So this is Barry from Coffee vs. Dust, taking a look at the beta dev build of Android L on my Nexus 5, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.